The idea uh, of being a futurist is that I was really concerned, uh, sort of growing up and, and watching as a professional, that most of our city, states and nations, uh, corporations as well, are run by pale, stale male men in their 50s and 60s who extrapolate the last 10 years of their life to plan a future that will look nothing like they can conceptualise. And, and so for me, I put this photograph up because uh, I, I give the metaphor that um, planning the future by looking at your past is like driving forwards in your car by using your rear vision mirror as you look in the past. And so my job isn't to get up here and tell you what's going to happen. My job is to tell you what's possible and what would be potentially preferred and encourage you to be the change you want to see in the world. If we in Adelaide, who are highly educated, wealthy, privileged, uh, organised, uh, if we can't make a positive impact on the world, the whole planet is in big trouble. So it's really important to know that we are the custodians of a, of a future and we've got a responsibility there. So why is ageing important? Well, interestingly enough, 50 seems to be the big number. Uh, you are starting to be in an older category. Uh, you're ticking the ageing box or the, the uh, older citizen when you're 50, I'm 51. Um, but interestingly enough, um, between now and 2050, the number of people over the age of 65 in Australia is going to increase by 50%. In fact, globally, it's going to double. It's going to increase by 100%. Um, not only is the number of older people going to dramatically increase, uh, but we're going to see more people on the planet over the age of 65 in the next couple of decades than have existed in the entire history of humanity, where we're going to have more people over the age of 65 than children under the age of five. So we're starting to see a very strong shift, not only in Australian society, but on the planet in terms of the rise of the ageing society uh, versus the decline uh, of a youthful uh, society. Who's heard of the term ageism? Yep. Now, importantly, it's not just for older people, it's also for younger people, but they deserve it because they're lazy and they just like avocado toast. But, um, I'm joking, um, but this is something that I just really wanted to touch on because I think it's incredibly important. So, right now, ageism is everywhere. One in two people worldwide are ageist against older people. Um, but interestingly enough, we actually um, not only do it to other people, we do it to ourselves. We talk ourselves down, we undermine ourselves. I was having a seniors moment. No, I just, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not perfect. Um, and so it really does actually also do things like it, it affects the economy, it affects other disadvantaged areas. If you apply disability or race or sex on top of ageism, you are really amplifying uh, some very serious problems. And it is harmful. Uh, and it is about physical health, it's about mental health, it's about social well-being, um, and it does take a heavy toll on the economy. If more older people were in the Australian economy, we're talking about somewhere near $50 billion. The futurist experts and technology experts are telling us that your phones are going to be cloud-connected to a computer that is smarter than every single person in this room by the year 2035. Now, we're so worried about climate change or COVID or who's going to win the football, and we haven't even really even got our head around the fact that the world is about to see the biggest tipping point in terms of how we work, full stop. Um, and it's all about artificial intelligence. AI won't be in the science fiction films. It's not going to just be in your Facebook or it's not going to be used by a bank to predict, it's going to be in everything. The health and wellbeing industry is really starting to become personalised. Uh, and um, so this idea that you can monitor your, your, your wrist, uh, on your wrist, your heartbeat, your health and wellbeing, they are going to put glucose into it. It can tell you that you haven't done enough steps today. Um, I, for example, have smart scales at home. I weigh myself, gets uploaded to my phone. I have three, four years now of um, binge fast, 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 I've got up and down. Um, and you can see my emotional state of well-being directly connected to my weight and I have measured it.
I also have a wireless um, a blood sugar a glucose uh, measurement that I can measure my own in my own house. So when I go to the doctor, I can show them my weight, how it's fluctuated, uh, my resting heart rate, uh, my VO2 max, how fit I am, whole range. Of and Apple is the biggest investor in the world of health technology, and they're going to get their smartphone registered by the American um, medical industry to actually make it a legal medical device. Uh, my mum is in a mid 80s she had a bad fall. She's now going to get an emergency button wristband to, if she has a fall, so she can press a button. Um, but the challenge I would say is that Apple are about to put that in their, in their watches. So if you can embrace some of the technology a little bit more up front, um, you can actually start to use this technology. That's a really good example of, of, of how it can actually protect, uh, protect your habits in your society. This is the density of Adelaide. We're right down the bottom. Um, and these are cities like Dublin, Vancouver, um, Manchester, Helsinki, even Sydney. Sydney's nearly twice us. Uh, and so it's not about, you know, full-on density, but it's about housing choice and housing diversity. Which one of your grandchildren or children can afford to buy a normal house anyway? So we, we need to provide those affordable housing options. And what that looks like it is about the fact that people tend to think of cities in terms of, I don't want high-rise, I want to tap single families. There is something, and Unley is absolutely the, the sweet spot, called the missing middle. It's about those other options there being medium density and meaning that people have access to medical services to, and they can walk to the post office, they can catch up with people in their main street communities, and, and it's about getting it right. Doing it. This is a good example from Sweden uh, called Hammerby. I'm a big guy the seat, and I went there, and this is not high density, this is medium density, but you can get really good quality infrastructure, great open space, great services, uh, public transport uh, that runs readily, uh, high quality <coughs> urban amenity. The more you do something, the more you think it must be right, and we've all grown up in low density, three bedroom detached houses, and we thought the car was the solution, and, and now we're starting to see a whole pile of things around climate change and obesity and loneliness. And, uh, etc. So we need to, to, to challenge our housing affordability. The, the polymath, the Leonardo da Vinci's at the time, were special because they were smarter than everyone else. They read books, they had access to information and they were fascinated. You're all polymaths. You have the internet. Many of you in this room are retired and you have time on your hands. And so the best... Uh, I lost 25 kilos uh, four years ago. The best thing I did to lose 25 kilos is sit on my ass hours and read and learn and grow. So it's not for me to teach you, it's for me to encourage you to understand that there's lots to learn and empower you all to be polymaths and think about this as a hobby. I want to live for as long as I can, I'm going to pick up my iPad, I'm going to read, I'm going to learn how to use the internet, I'm going to get out there and get the information. Has anyone heard of Ikigai? Yep. So there's Japanese philosophy where Ikigai is that point where you, you can actually combine what you love, what you're good at, what you get paid for if you do, or you volunteer, uh, and what your world actually needs. Vocation, mission, passion, profession, when it all comes together. And so as a someone who's potentially retired or moving into your old age, it's about finding that purple patch. If you're not enjoying your life, and if you're not in that space, as someone who's retired, can't really complain, you're the only person. You don't need money to do these things. It's about choosing to be the person you want to be. It's not about being wealthy or rich. The other one I'd say is, don't retire. Now, stop doing the job you're doing, but don't think of it as retirement. Don't think of it as giving up. Think of it as a next phase. Think about doing something differently. Have a plan. Doing a retirement as I'm retired is kind of like saying, I'm doing it. Mate, you can do lots of things. You've got so much knowledge you can share with the next generation. You can volunteer. You, you know, you can walk more. You can do your yoga. Don't think of it as work and then retirement. Think of it as a transition into a next and more enjoyable stage in your life. On that basis, I hope that's been useful. I really want to thank the City of Hungary for it and a very kind introduction. Thank you very much to Jill. I hope you've got something out of it. Thanks again for that.